Hey everyone, this is my Thomas collection and today I'm going to show you all six engines. First, let's take a look at Thomas. Now, Thomas is a very nice engine. I like how he has the number one on it. And also, his face looks very nice. Also, his whistle is a little crooked, but that's okay. The rest of the model is very nice. And I got this last year at the train when the train show came out. So it's a pretty old item. Next, let's take a look at Edward. Edward is the one of the oldest engines because he was the actually first one in the Thomason show. You would think it would be called Edward and Friends, but I think Thomas is a better name. So that's why they call it Thomas and Friends. Anyway, his face reminds me of the TV show and the paint job looks really nice. And I like how they did the wheel design and the number two on the tender. Next, let's take a look at Henry. Now, I like how many wheels they add, just like in the TV show. It's kind of neat. Also, I like how long they make these engines. I think it's just because my favorite color is green. Yeah. Next, let's take a look at Gordon. Gordon is very nice, and he looks good. In some videos, I see that Gordons are destroyed. Which I don't know why, but they just keep getting destroyed. Anyway, the go the rest of the models looks nice. And I think they're about the same size as Henry. Yep. Overall, the rest of the models very nice. And again, they have the same amount of wheels, just like in the TV show. Next, let's take a look at James. Now, James is a splendid red engine. And I like how they made the gold dome gold also why do they have this red paint on here he's a splendid red engine he should have no paint on here i guess in their comment it was like a little small anyway the rest of the model is looks good next last let's take a look at percy now for percy there's something wrong about percy look you know these same engines have his eyeballs are a little small and his mouth is smaller and his eyebrows are smaller. But, uh, usually you see the eyebrows, eyeballs are the same size as these ones. But in this case, they just made it a little smaller. I don't know why if you compare it to Thomas, but it doesn't mean that Percy is a bad model. It just means that he, they could make it similar which I wish they could next time. So now that I told you all about these engines, I'm gonna tell you some stories of them. And this one is Thomas in the trucks. And that's the first one that's in the story. That's him. So let's dive in to the island of Sodor. Thomas the tank engine wouldn't stop being a nuisance. Night after night he kept the other engines awake. I'm tired of pushing coaches. I want to see the world. The other engines didn't take much notice, for Thomas was a little engine with a long tongue. But one night, Edward came to the shed. He was a kind little engine and felt sorry for Thomas. I've got some trucks to take home tomorrow. If you take them instead of me, I'll push coaches in the yard. Thank you, said Thomas. That will be nice. Next morning, Edward and Thomas asked their drivers, and when they said yes, Thomas ran off happily to find trucks. Now, trucks are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they are doing. And I'm sorry to say they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about trucks. He warned Thomas to be careful, but Thomas was too excited to listen. The shunter fastened the coupling, and when the signal dropped, Thomas was ready. The guard blew his whistle. Peep, peep, answered Thomas and started off. But the trucks weren't ready. Oh, 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 they screamed. Wait, Thomas, wait. 
but Thomas wouldn't wait. Come on, come on, he puffed. All right, all right, don't fuss, all right, don't fuss, grumbled the trucks. Thomas began going faster and faster. Whee! He whistled as he rushed through Henry's tunnel. Hurry, hurry, called Thomas. He was feeling very proud of himself, but the trucks grew crosser and crosser. At last, Thomas slowed down as he came to Gordon's Hill. Steady now, steady, warned the driver as they reached the top. He began to put on the brakes. We're stopping, we're stopping, called Thomas. No, 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 answered the trucks bumping into each other. Go on, go on. Before the driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind him. Poor Thomas tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing, stop pushing, he hissed, but the trucks took no notice. Go on, go on, they giggled in their silly way. There's the station, oh dear, what shall I do, he cried. He rattled straight through and swerved into the good yard. Thomas shut his eyes, I must stop. When he opened his eyes, he saw he had stopped just in front of the buffers. There watching him was the fat controller. What are you doing here, Thomas, he asked. I brought Edward's trucks, Thomas answered. Why did you come so fast? I didn't mean to. I was pushed, said Thomas. You've got a lot to learn about trucks then, little Thomas. After pushing them about here for a few weeks, you'll know almost as much about them as Edward. Then you'll be a really useful engine. So that was Thomas's story, Thomas and the Trucks. I hope he learned a valuable lesson. Next up is Edward's story. Edward is the oldest engine, and his parts are starting to worn out. So episode two is called Edward and Gordon. I hope, so let's dive into episode two. I hope you enjoy it. One day, Edward was in the shed where he lived with the other engines. They were all bigger than Edward and boasted about it. The driver won't choose you again, said Gordon. He wants strong engines like us. But the driver and fireman felt sorry for Edward. Would you like to come out today? Oh, yes, please, said Edward. So they lit his fire, made lots of steam, and Edward puffed away. The other engines were very cross at being left behind. Edward worked hard all day. The coaches thought he was very kind and the driver was very pleased. I'm going out again tomorrow, Edward told the other engines that night. What do you think of that? But he didn't hear what they thought, for he was so tired and happy that he fell asleep at once. Next morning, Edward woke up to find nothing had changed. Gordon was still boasting. You watch me, little Edward, as I rush through with the express. That will be a splendid sight for you. Goodbye, little Edward. Look out for me this afternoon. Woo -hoo! 
Edward went off to do some shunting. Edward liked shunting. It was fun playing with trucks. He would come up quietly and give them a push. Then he would stop and the silly trucks would go bump into each other. Oh, they cried, whatever is happening. Edward played till there were no more trucks. Then he stopped to rest. Presently he heard a whistle. Gordon was very cross. Instead of nice shining coaches, he was pulling a lot of very dirty trucks. A good strain, a good strain, a good strain, he grumbled. The shame of it, the shame of it, oh the shame of it. Edward laughed and went to find some more trucks. Then there was trouble. Gordon can't get up the hill, the porter called to Edward's driver. Will you take Edward and push him, please? They found Gordon halfway up and very cross. His driver and fireman were talking to him severely. You're not trying. I can't do it, said Gordon. The noisy trucks hold an engine back so. Edward's driver came up. We've come to push. No use at all, said Gordon. You wait and see, replied Edward's driver. They brought the train back to the bottom of the hill. I'm ready, said Edward. No good, grumbled Gordon. They pulled and pushed as hard as they could. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it, puffed Gordon. I will do it. I will do it. I will do it, puffed Edward. Edward pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever he could. And almost before he realized it, Gordon found himself at the top of the hill. I've done it, I've done it, I've done it, he said proudly. He forgot all about Edward and didn't wait to say thank you. Edward was left out of breath and far behind. He ran on to the next station and there he found that the driver and fireman were very pleased with him. The fireman gave him a nice long drink. And the driver said, I'll get out my paint tomorrow and give you a beautiful coat of blue with red stripes. Then you'll be the smartest engine in the shed. So that was Edward's story. Next, we're going to do a Henry story. In this story, we're going to do Henry's special call. I hope you enjoy it. One morning, Henry was feeling very sorry for himself. Sometimes he could pull trains, but sometimes he felt he had no strength at all. I suffer dreadfully and no one cares. Rubbish, Henry, snorted James. You don't work hard enough. Sir Topham Hatt spoke to him too. What's wrong with you, Henry? You have had lots of new parts and new paint, too, but they've done you no good. If we can't make you better, we must get another engine instead of you to do the work. This made Henry, his driver and fireman, very sad. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting when Henry came to the platform. He had taken off his hat and coat and put on overalls. Henry managed to start, but his fireman was not satisfied. Henry is a bad steamer, he said to Sir Topham Hatt. I build up his fire, but it doesn't give enough heat. Henry tried very hard, but it was no good. He didn't have enough steam and came to a stop outside Edward's station. Oh dear, thought Henry. I shall have to go away. Oh dear, oh dear. All he could do was to go slowly onto a siding and Edward took charge of the train. Sir Topham Hatt and the fireman went on discussing Henry's troubles. What do you think is wrong, fireman? Asked Sir Topham Hatt. Excuse me, sir, he answered, but the fact is the coal is wrong. 
We've had a poor lot lately, and today it's worse. The other engines can manage. They have big fireboxes. Henry's is small and can't make the heat. With Welsh coal, he'd be a different engine. It's expensive, said Sir Topham Hatt, but Henry must have a fair chance. James shall go and fetch some. When the Welsh coal came, Henry's driver and fireman were excited. Now we'll show them, Henry, old fellow. They carefully made his fire, putting large lumps of coal like a wall round the outside. Then the glowing middle part was covered with smaller lumps. You're spoiling my fire, complained Henry. Wait and see, said the fireman. We'll have a roaring fire just when we want it. The fireman was right. When Henry reached the platform, the water was boiling nicely, and he had to let off steam. How are you, Henry? Beep, beep, beep. I feel fine. Have you a good fire, driver? Never better, sir, and plenty of steam. No record breaking, warned Sir Topham Hatt. Don't push him too hard. Henry won't need pushing, sir. I'll have to hold him back. Henry had a lovely day. He had never felt so well in his life. He wanted to go fast, but his driver wouldn't let him. Steady, old fellow, he would say. There's plenty of time. They arrived early at the station. Thomas puffed in. Where have you been, lazy bones? asked Henry. Oh, I can't wait for dawdling tank engines like you. Goodbye. said Thomas to the coaches. Have you ever seen anything like it? Both Annie and Clarabel agreed that they never had. So that was Henry's story. And now we're going to dive in to Gordon's story, A Cow on the Line. And this one is pretty, pretty silly. So I hope you enjoy it. Edward was getting old. His bearings were worn and he clanked as he puffed along. He was taking empty cattle cars to a market town. The sun shone, birds sang. But Edward was heading for trouble. Come on, come on, he puffed. Oh, oh, screamed the cars. Edward puffed and clanked, the cars rattled and screamed. Some cows were grazing nearby. They were not used to trains. The noise and smoke disturbed them. As Edward clanked by, they broke through the fence and ran across the line. A coupling was broken and some cars were left behind. Edward felt a jerk, but didn't take much notice. He was used to cattle cars. Bother those cars, he thought. Why can't they come quietly? He was at the next station before either he or his driver realized what had happened. When Gordon and Henry heard about the accident, they laughed and boasted. Fancy allowing cows to break your train. They wouldn't dare do that to us. We'd show them. Old Toby was cross. You couldn't help it, Edward. They've never met cows. I have, and I know the trouble they are. Some days later, Gordon rushed through Edward's station. Boop, boop! Mind the cows! Hurry, hurry, puffed Gordon. Don't make such a fuss! Don't make such a fuss, grumbled his coaches. A long stretch of line lay ahead. In the distance was a bridge. It seemed to Gordon that there was something on the bridge. His driver thought so too. Whoa, 
Joe Gordon, he said, and shut off steam. Huh, said Gordon. It's only a cow. Shoo! Shoo! He moved slowly onto the bridge, but the cow wouldn't shoo. She had lost her calf and felt lonely. She said sadly. Everyone tried to send her away, but she wouldn't go. Henry arrived. What's this? A cow? I'll soon settle her. Be off! Be off! <coughs> Henry backed away nervously. I don't want to hurt her. At the next station, Henry's conductor told them about the cow and warned the signalman that the line was blocked. That must be Bluebell, said the porter. Her calf is here, looking for her mother. Percy will take her along. At the bridge, Bluebell was very pleased to see her calf again, and the porter led them away. Not a word. Keep it secret, whispered Gordon and Henry to each other. They felt rather silly, but the story soon spread. Well, 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 chuckled Edward. Two big engines, afraid of a cow. Afraid? Rubbish, said Gordon. We didn't want the poor thing to hurt herself by running up against us. We stopped so as not to excite her. You see what I mean, my dear Edward? Yes, Gordon, said Edward. Gordon felt somehow that Edward saw only too well. So that was Gordon's story, Cow on the Line. It was pretty silly, but I'm glad the cow got her calf back. Next is James' story. It's called James and the Express. I hope you enjoy it. One night, Henry and Gordon were alone with James. Although the fat controller was beginning to think well of him, whenever a chance came, the other engines would talk of nothing but bootlaces. Remember the time one had to be used to get you out of trouble, James, they would tease. James tried to get his own back, talking about engines who got shut up in tunnels and stuck on hills, but they wouldn't listen. You talk too much, little James, said Gordon. A fine, strong engine like me has something to talk about. I'm the only engine who can pull the express. When I'm not there, they need two engines. Think of that. I've pulled expresses for years and have never once lost my way. I seem to know the right line by instinct. Every wise engine knows, of course, that the signalman works the points to make engines run on the right lines. But Gordon was so proud he had forgotten. Wake up, James, said Gordon next morning. It's nearly time for the express. What are you doing? Odd jobs? Oh, well, we all have to begin somewhere, don't we? Run along now and get my coaches. Don't be late. James went to get Gordon's coaches. They were all shining with lovely new paint. He was careful not to bump them, and they followed him smoothly into the station, singing happily, we're going away, we're going away. I wish I was going with you, said James. I should love to pull the express and go flying along the line. Gordon, with much noise and blowing of steam, got ready to back onto the train. The fat controller was on the train with other important people. And as soon as they heard the guard's whistle, Gordon started. Look at me now, look at me now, he puffed, and the coaches glided after him. Poop, 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 poop. Goodbye, little James, see you tomorrow. James watched the train disappear and then went back to work. He pushed some trucks into their proper sidings and went to fetch the coaches for another train. James had just brought the coaches to the platform when he heard a mournful noise. 
There was Gordon trying to sidle into the station without being noticed. Hello, Gordon. Is it tomorrow? asked James. Gordon didn't answer. He just let off steam feebly. Did you lose your way, Gordon? said James. No, it was lost for me. I was switched off the main line onto the loop. I had to go all round and back again. Perhaps it was instinct, said James. Meanwhile, all the passengers hurried to the booking office. We want our money back, they shouted. But the fat controller climbed on a trolley and blew the guard's whistle so loudly that they all stopped to look at him. Then he promised them a new train at once. Gordon can't do it, he said. Will you pull it for us, James? Yes, sir, I'll try. So James was coupled on and everyone got in. Do your best, James, said the fat controller. Come along, come along, puffed James. You're pulling as well, you're pulling as well, sang the coaches. Bridges and stations flashed by, the passengers cheered, and they soon reached the station. Everyone said thank you to James, and the fat controller was very impressed. Well done, he said. Would you like to pull the express sometimes? Yes, please, answered James. Next day, when James came by, Gordon was pushing trucks. I like some quiet work for a change, he said. I'm teaching these trucks manners. You did well with those coaches, I hear. Good, we'll show them. And he gave his trucks a bump. James and Gordon are now good friends. James sometimes takes the express to give Gordon a rest. Gordon never talks about bootlaces. And they are both quite agreed on the subject of trucks. So that was James's story. Um, James and the Express. Last, let's take a look at Percy's story, which is Percy runs away. And this, and this one learns him a lesson. Percy always be careful on the main line, and he tries to be a really useful engine. So let's dive into the last episode, Percy runs away. I hope you enjoy it. Henry, James, and Gordon were miserable. They had been shut up for several days for being naughty and longed to be let out again. At last, Sir Topham had arrived. I hope you are sorry, he said, and that you understand that every job on the railway is important. We have a new tank engine called Percy, who helps pull coaches, and Thomas and Edward have worked the main line nicely. But I will let you out now if you promise to work hard. Yes, sir, said the three engines. We will. That's good. But please remember that this no-shunting nonsense must stop. Sir Topham Hatt then told Percy, Edward, and Thomas that they could go and play on the branch line for a few days. And they ran off happily to find Annie and Clarabelle at the junction. The two coaches were very pleased to see Thomas again. Edward and Percy played with the freight cars. Stop, 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 screamed the cars as they were pushed into their proper sidings. But the two engines laughed and went on shunting till the cars were tidily arranged. Next, Edward took some empty cars to the quarry. Percy was left alone. He didn't mind that a bit. He liked watching trains and being cheeky to the other engines. Hurry, 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 he would call, and they got very cross. After a great deal of shunting, Percy was waiting for the signalman to set the switch so he could get back to the yard. Percy was being rather careless and not paying attention. Edward had warned Percy, be careful on the main line, whistle to the signalman that you were there. But Percy didn't remember to whistle, and so the busy signalman forgot him. Percy waited and waited. The switch was still against him, so he couldn't move. Then he looked along the main line. Beep! Beep! He whistled in horror, for rushing straight toward him was Gordon with the express. Oh! groaned Gordon. Get out of my way!
Percy opened his eyes. Gordon had stopped with Percy's buffers just a few inches from his own. But Percy had begun to move. I won't stay here. I'll run away, he puffed. He went straight through Edward's station and was so frightened that he ran right up Gordon's hill without stopping. That he was tired, but he couldn't stop. He had no driver to shut off steam and apply the brakes. I want to stop! I want to stop! He puffed. The man in the signal box saw Percy was in trouble, so he kindly set the switch. Percy puffed wearily onto a nice empty siding, ending in a big bank of earth. He was too tired now to care where he went. I want to stop! I want to stop! I have stopped, he puffed thankfully. Never mind, Percy, said the workman as they dug him out. You shall have a drink and some coal and then you'll feel better. Presently, Gordon arrived. Well done, Percy. You started so quickly that you stopped a nasty accident. I'm sorry I was cheeky, said Percy. You were clever to stop, replied Gordon. Then Gordon helped pull Percy out from the bank. The two engines are now good friends, but Percy is always most careful when he goes out on the main line. So that was the island of Sodor. And now it's time to dive out of it. And that was also Percy's story too. So this has been my entire Thomas collection. And here's some other items that they didn't show them that mu often in the TV show, but they are very nice. We got Toby, Mavis, you wouldn't see her a lot, but it's a diesel. Annie. And Clarabelle, Birdie. I don't know why there's any passengers in his windows. Kind of strange. And last but not least, we have Harold the helicopter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All in one set, you can buy so many Thomas items that they're gonna take up your whole house mm -hmm. so thanks for watching this video guys and i hope you have all have a great day